folks, we are back. Breakdown boys, Wade Sensei. Oops. And in the house, Sensei, today we have probably the most anticipated, most sought after, most dangerous. I'm talking about boxing here, not the the most <laughs> intriguing female influencer boxer in the space. Some are calling her the queen. Some are calling her the beast. They refer to her on Instagram as the Dumble Dong. It is L Brooke. Elle, how you doing? Hey, I'm good, thank you. That is quite the entrance. Like, I feel like, you know that meme about uh, Pacquiao? But it's like the former... Da, 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 da. I feel like that was yes. that kind of entrance. Yes. yes. Wade always does it. Wade has the best. You know I'm the cooking best. it up. Well, listen. We got you in the house today because we are we are very interested in this Kingpin tournament. Obviously, uh, at this point, it'll be public because I'm 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 announcing today. Both myself and Sensei are a part of the announce team. So yeah, yes. they, oh, you didn't know that, huh? So yeah, no. we're finding out right now. Yeah. No. Yeah, Why? yeah. You couldn't like we literally had a chit chat two seconds ago off a of camera, and you literally did it. You waited until this second to tell me. Like I, that's that's amazing. Like yeah. congratulations. I, I'm I'm so happy you're involved. <laughs> yes, yes. I wanted to get wow. your genuine reaction there. Um, so we're we're involved and we're very excited for this tournament. But we're more excited to see L. Brooke get back in there. What does it feel like to finally get back into the ring? You're about to do it here in a couple of weeks. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean it's only been four months. Oh, well, by the time like near enough four months. So um, it's not been too long, but um. I've been training so bloody hard and last week and this week I've had Sammy Joe down and it's been intense yeah. sparring like four times a week and she's tough like she's been fighting 12 years um she's a professional so I'm testing myself to the limits and I've been broken a few times in sparring but um you know that's how I know that I'm gonna make it in the ring and it's only toughening me up Sensei you I don't know yeah. if you know this but this girl spars with Ebony Bridges and Sammy Joe Luxton is hey nasty Muay Thai Monster. practitioner. Mark Tibbs in the gym. L, talk to me about what it means to be in a gym like that against high-level professionals and with high-level coaching that, I, quite honestly, I don't know if anybody else in the influencer scene has. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was quite a, a shock to begin with because um, it was either sink or swim, I think. Mark wouldn't have taken me on if he didn't think that I was going to like uphold to the name. Like He's putting his reputation into right. me. Um, so there's a lot of trust in that aspect. And I train just as hard as any of the other professionals in the gym. I mean, probably not as hard as Ebony because she's sparring 10 rounds. I mean, I'm only Sheesh. doing six, but <laughs> yeah, that's like world champion business. But um, right. yeah, no, I am training really hard and I have to um, in this space. And it wasn't something that I originally, like when I first went into that gym, I wasn't thinking I want to be a boxer forever, but it's something that I've taken on to and I'm enjoying the discipline and the mental and physical um positives that is brought on to me so uh, yeah it's what i want to do for the foreseeable future now sensei That's you dope. had a question about because I, I before we get into her, her fight here on on kingpin with danielka you had a question about what it was like in that faith fight talk to me about a little bit of that what you were what you wanted to ask out there yeah the the faith fight i know it didn't, it didn't last long and it, and it went your way it was a, a bit of a firefight um, but just take me through that, that moment. I, you, you look so stone cold, you know, she, she came forward and it looked like you just enjoy the firefight. Like you got a lot of people, you know, especially early on fighting, they're, they're wincing and they're turning their head for the punches, but your head was just stone cold, eyes forward, eyes open, no blinking and just trading and throwing punches. So is that like, is that like your style? Do you love a fight like that? Um, not that obviously I'd prefer not to get hit, but I've been right. conditioned to being hit. <laughs> and when I mean Ebony, like she fights a bantam way, like yeah. she and she hits so hard, like unbelievably hard, like a truck. So I'm conditioned to being hit. So when I'm in when I'm in that ring, I'm not phased. I'm just like, okay. And I'm so keen and so focused. I have like laser eye focus on winning that it doesn't really bother me anyway. Like I know the goal, and the goal is just. You know, and I, I fight with like vicious intention. I'm spiteful as well. So if I have to take a hit to give three back, then then I will. That's my style. But that's for the first and the second fight. That was kind of the tactics. But now I'm kind of learning to box because that would be the ideal, right? You know, right. we can't always have a fight. We want right. to um, look pretty at the same time. So kind of changing tactics this time. But, you know, if I need to brawl, then that suits me. Like um, you want to stand a fight with me. That's exactly what I want to do. And I think a lot of these 
female influencer boxers, they don't want to be hit as much. <laughs> I don't <laughs> reckon they've got it in them. Right. You're talking That's about true. looking pretty. You were bleeding. Both of you were in that fight, and you were smiling, yeah. blood coming down your face. I'm sitting <laughs> ringside. The whole time. I gotta admit, talk about looking pretty. Damn, girl. That was, that was, uh, that, that had me, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, okay. Cause we don't, yeah, like, we, like I said, good. we don't see it, you know, and you guys went after it and it was a, a war. And in those moments, it was really who gets to the shot first. And I think that's where your talent has really started to rise because everybody can swing punches, but that's not what you're doing. I think people look at it like, oh, she's just brawling. It's yeah. not. You're actually throwing mm -hmm. with, with precision and timing and you have some coordination and some rhythm there that again, a lot of girls haven't caught up to yet. Yeah, and I think it's, um, you know, I don't want to, like, uh, say anything bad on Faith, but if someone's swinging on the other end, it's going to make the other fighter look worse anyway. So, right. yeah. you know, if, if people are swinging, it's always going to make the fight look a little bit messy. And Mark said to me, like, this was always the, the plan. I think people, if they don't know, like, the situation that I'm a smaller fighter, she's bigger, and, you know, all the ambiguity, like, it was always the plan to go into there and to bring the fight to her, be aggressive, and, you know, lay it on thick. And because um, I can't, I, could, I, I couldn't have boxed that long. Like I'm five foot one and she's right. five nine. So it was always the game plan and to manhandle her, like putting her down. That was always the plan, mm -hmm. the pressure, everything. So people can, you know, like talk bad on my performance, but every single thing we did was, you know, executed brilliantly, like on mine and Mark's behalf. Yeah. No, it was a great game plan and, and you went out and executed it and you get that win and out of nowhere pops up the Kingpin tournament and we see... L. Brooks' name signed on the dotted line. When you sign with Kingpin, it very much looks like you're out to prove a point here. It's not just to take part in something. It literally is the Conor McGregor line to take over. Is that kind of the idea here to, to just wash everything and say, no, you know what? You got to go through me in the women's scene. Yeah, 100%. Because for me, like I, you know, I had like two offers at the time, like Misfits and Kingpin. And I said to Mams, like, I really want to do this tournament. And I want you to believe in me to do this tournament because I want to believe I'm the best. And I really need to be active to improve because all the time I don't have an opponent. I've got nothing to train for. And yes, I'm casually training, but it doesn't give me that laser focus that I need. Mm. Um, and what's better than, you know, three fights within what, five months? Like the amount of time you're going to be putting into getting better and each fight, can, you know, just having a fight and you will walk into the gym the next Monday and you'll be a 10 times better fighter. Right. Like, I don't know how it works, but yep. as soon as you have that one fight, it's, yeah, it's just everything makes sense. Um, and all the rounds banked is experience for me. So that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, like proving I'm the best. I think everyone's always kind of like got my name there at the moment. Like, oh, like there's not many people in the scene right now. So that's eight, that's seven people I haven't had to find to try fight me either. So it's convenience. It's me proving I'm the best. There's so many things about it that just screamed, do it. So I was like, yeah. I'm going to do it because it's not even my weight category either. These girls are bloody huge. Yeah, so it yeah. is a challenge for me. Well, speaking of huge, um, right. since hey, I, got, <laughs> I was going to say about the, the up, size bro. difference. You set me no, up. No, bro. bro. I'm just, I was going to ask you. Um, <laughs> you were on stage with Danielka and L yes, during their yes. face off. Was there, was it a massive, was it as massive a size difference as it looked like from off stage? Yeah, I want to ask L because the, the, the difference with the girls is the heels. So like I'm like when I'm watching yeah. a face off, right? There's not usually the guys aren't usually wearing heels. So I see the height difference. I'm like, whoa. But then I'm like height difference. Then I look down and I see like like a it looks like a foot on on the bottom of the <laughs> foot, right? So I'm like, okay, is it that much of a height difference? Because we just said that uh, Faith was you know five nine. So yeah, there, crazy. Was, there was already a, a big difference there, and you've shown that you can deal with that height difference but what is the height difference here what is the do you know what the height difference is so i actually googled it i think she's 5'10 so they're still like pretty big i don't know around yeah. that but i mean the tallest girl in the tournament is six foot yeah like what is yeah. she gonna look like at 63 kilo i really don't know like i think she's got a lot of weight to lose are you talking sure. about barbie yeah yeah barbie's got to come down a bit when you did stand in front of Danielka, obviously the, the language barrier is a little tough, right? You had a translator and the whole yeah. thing. What was the sense you got seeing her for the first time and kind of just sizing her up? You know what? I thought, oh, I've, uh, I've probably picked uh, one of the better opponents here. Um, just, I think, the, uh, out of experience. Right. Um, so I, and I pulled out the name. I was like, who the F is Ola? I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. what the oh, hell? Yeah. Like, it didn't even click. I was like, who the God is that? Um, but no, um, 
you know, like it, she can be intimidating because of her size and that's something that I need to work on. But I think that I've already proved that I can do that because when I had my fight with Faith, that was always um, something I had in my own head. I'm like, what about if the distance is not there? Like, what about if I am not landing? But now I know I can do that. Yeah. That, um, you know, the game plan hasn't really changed. Well, you know, she has a little bit of an MMA background, right? Some striking background in multiple disciplines. Here's something that's really cool that I want you to talk about. You guys are actually going to have a face-to-face -face and have a little bit of a press conference for Fame MMA in Poland, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, no, 100% we're going to be there. Um, I've that's awesome, by the way. Sure. I that's know. So I've, so I don't dope. know that much about Fame MMA, but I know they've got a great, great roster of fighters, yeah. and I really appreciate, like, Zuski, I know I've called her out before. Um, they've got a great roster of fighters, so it'll be good to be in and around that scene. So, Sensei, I don't know if you saw this, but I, I have to bring it up because it, there, was some, there was some beef here, you know? There was some, some sizzle between you and Danielka on Twitter, and really it was thought it was friendly, you know? I thought you guys had kind of been friendly on stage, and then she came after you, came for your neck, talking about the OnlyFans <laughs> and the, you know, the way you do oh, business wow. outside of the ring. What, what happened there? Yeah, I know. It was so odd. So, like, obviously it was, um, I think, you know, partly, I think everyone was so nice that tournament day. Yeah, I yeah. think everyone was just finding their own feet. Like, everyone was perhaps a bit nervous. Like, not, when is the last, like, no one's been called on a stage before to choose their opponent. It's all new for so many people. Right. So, it's a bit awkward. And I think for her, there was a translator. And I guess we just didn't know anything about each other because I haven't researched seven other girls. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know who... Your, your opponent is so um yeah when she found out my job I was a bit like oh okay and I, I think you know like even um one of the people that work at uh Kingpin they were like oh she's really unhappy with your job like I'm with her right now so I knew she meant it because oh, she had wow. told him yeah yeah so then she did all that afterwards I was like oh wow she really means that with intent <laughs> does that does that give you any you know motivation any more motivation to do it for the only fans girls you know what i'm saying to put on for the for the squad or like does that Facts. matter at all to you yeah i mean obviously i'm gonna stand by my line of work it's um you know it's how i've grown like yeah. i would never be here right now if i never did only fans um so it it means a lot to me and i always stand for like the um you know the prejudice we get and the discrimination within the whole community and online and the hate and abuse so it doesn't really help uh someone of that uh, platform yeah. also reinforcing that negativity towards only fans girls so for me i think it always helps having someone that's being nasty to you anyway it just makes it easier as an opponent if you're having an <laughs> opponent like faith who was really really nice it's kind yeah, of hard right. to get into that mode and in you know like just g yourself up whereas um if you've got someone that's being um an arsehole you're like all right i'm, I'm gonna hit you really hard <laughs> even harder than i would before <laughs> so sensei on that note, we also had yes. another one of our boys, one of our guys, man, Leon Wills, had yeah, some things to say back, about but... you know the OnlyFans girls. Talk, talk to me about that. Man. <laughs> yes, yeah, Leon. I saw Leon had uh, had tweeted. Uh, I got the tweet and... here. You want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, read yeah, the tweet. Yeah, go on. Okay. Genuine Recite question. It. This is from Leon Wills. Genuine question: Why is the female influencer boxing scene riddled with <laughs> Jezebels and harlots? Man is speaking in biblical terms. I can't even click on their Twitter in public. <laughs> so he says that. And L, I thought, with a classy response here. Uh, LK back. Genuine question. How's the online coaching going? If the website is anything to go by, not great. Could have done better off my Etch-A-Sketch. Oh. That was a bit savage, wasn't no, it? Hey, that man, was a bit go, savage. I, listen, he came for your neck. You had to come back. Uh, Sensei, but, you have an answer to that question, though, right? Yeah, L, did you see my... I don't know if you saw my answer. I had, I had answered it. I don't know if you saw because the what he was talking about. I actually brought up to Wade um, before, but read, but, but Wade, do you have my tweet? Yeah, I'll read. Yeah, I'll my, read your tweet. It says, yeah, "Read my response to, to Leon." Actually, I had this convo recently on a serious note. There's so few females in combat sports in general, so the willingness it takes to make that walk to the ring and risk a broken nose slash embarrassment. These women have zero fear of judgment. Makes them good fighters, in my opinion. Yeah, no, 100%. And I think that if you think about the amount of abuse we get on the daily and how tough we have to be to have this job anyway, yep. um, it, it's, it's self-explanatory. Yeah. Like, we're tough motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I noticed that, I, like, early on in the scene and when, when I saw this, you know, um, and I was actually, the person I was having the combo was with Wade. I was like, man, 
there's a psychology behind it because even with Faith, I was wondering if she can take a punch. And I wondered how she was going to deal with the, the limelight and the bright lights and the, the pressure, right, and the fear of judgment, right, and this. And I feel like, you know, females deal with that more often than men, especially when it comes to, like, your, your looks or your image. So I was like, these girls don't care. And I feel like that helps them when it comes to sparring and training and, and, and dealing with that kind of adversity. And it makes for really good makes for really good fighters. So I'm like, it's not – I don't think it's about the promotion. A lot of people think like, oh, they're doing it for clout because they can help promote their OnlyFans. I'm like, obviously that helps. But the, the psychology yeah. behind a fighter and the toughness that it takes, I'm like, to me, that's why you see these girls being able to excel and, and are going to make really good fighters. Yeah, and I think a lot of OnlyFans people, like, I can't speak for all of them because, norm- like, a lot have. What do you mean? You're the queen. In this thing. They- You're the queen. You <laughs> no, but a lot of OnlyFans. No, a lot of OnlyFans girls, they do have tough upbringings or, like, something's happened in their life yeah. that they revert to sex work and OnlyFans and that kind of thing. So, you know, as they, they are definitely tougher as people because everyone has their own story and why they do it. And not everyone's is just because I want to be rich and famous. You know, there's, yeah. like, a wide variety right. of reasons. Absolutely. Um, and and on that note, I wanted to, to talk about something that's a little more tough moving forward for you, and that is a potential yeah. semifinal matchup coming your way between, quite frankly, the biggest legs I've seen on a human being and Julie <laughs> or Daniela Hemsley. Have you? I know you don't want to look past Danielka at all. I know yeah. you don't want to look past Ola, but looking to that semifinal, you kind of have to because we're in a tournament format. You kind of have to be peaking that way. How do you see that fight going? Uh, between me and either one of those opponents. Bet- between those fight. two at first, oh, right? How, how do you see that fights. fight going? Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I mean, uh, Daniela is quite interesting because all she talks about, like uh, I saw her the other day because I crossed paths um, when we were doing a Kingpin uh, video. And she was like, we we're just talking about normally. And she was like, oh, and I'm being trained by Leon Edwards striking coach. Like, yep. that's not going to make you a good fighter. Like, just because... I'm being trained the, like by a good team doesn't mean that I'm automatically going to be good within myself. True. So I don't know whether, you know, her just saying that and trying to reinforcing that, is that just trying to make her feel better? I don't know. Like, is that just... It's definitely you know, a comfort she's... thing. Like, if you feel yeah. you have yeah. the best coaches in your camp, then you definitely feel as if I can destroy anybody. Like, it's the same reason yeah. we hear a lot of people mention their, I'm, I'm knocking out pros. I'm knocking out... You know, yeah, high-level amateurs, true. but the fight is different, right? Styles make fights, and yeah. it's right. not going to work the same way as it, as it is in sparring. Yeah, I think they're equally sized, though. I think Daniela is a little bit taller, and Julie's a bit shorter and stockier, but, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know what both their weights are right now. But, um, yeah, I think they both haven't fought, so it's going to be interesting. If Julie comes out all guns blazing, I mean, she's <laughs> like, those muscles need oxygen. What are you laughing at? I don't know if she's going she's gonna to gas. Yeah, she, she's, so, like I said, those legs, she got horse legs. Sensei, how do you see that fight going? Yeah, I just see Julie just literally galloping across. Remember when <laughs> we saw uh, – when we? I'm, I'm not kidding. Remember when we saw <laughs> – Wade's dying right now. Um, <laughs> bro, remember when we saw – was it? What's his name? What's the big dude that fought Hasim? Greg, is it Greg, Hardy. Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy. Remember when we saw Greg Hardy just switch it and just ba boom, ba boom. Yeah, and just start turned going it on. Crazy yeah. on the mids and turn it. That's what I imagine from Julie. I imagine it here, like stomping on the canvas and just. But like you said, <laughs> like I think that may if she doesn't get a win early, yeah, it may go against her. You know. Okay. But I, it must be re- really. I, I imagine it's gonna be really intimidating to yeah. <laughs> to to see that going those first couple of seconds her going Clydesdale (laughs) is definitely going to be something the storm um okay yeah so we obviously in in obviously you think you're winning this tournament of course but I want to transition from the women's to the men's side of the tournament yeah and I'm gonna ask you tough questions here Elsa you gotta get ready oh I'm sweating (laughs) you want me to have enemies (laughs) <laughs> this is listen. This is purely, you know, no no <laughs> personal feelings involved. Just an analytical point of view. Who yeah. wins this tournament on the men's side? L. Who do you have? I think I, if you look at um, what people have achieved in their fight so far, I think uh-huh. everyone would easily say Gib, right? Like on paper, Gib. On paper, yes, yes. On paper, yeah. Gib. Yep. <clears throat> I like the way you but, said that. Uh, yeah, I was trying to think, like you know, like just from what what. You know, what he's achieved so far, whereas there's, you know, um, Tom's only had one fight. Right. 
Right. Uh, Jarvis has only had one fight, but we both know that they're really good fighters. And, you know, given that night, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, I definitely think that Tom is the toughest in the tournament. Um, and Jarvis, and he, you know that even that sparring footage with Mayweather, I was actually impressed with that. I know like, like so many people were, were memeing too. him on the internet. Were I was like, his movement is good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think of, like, um, uh, Nate, I have no idea. Um, I've watched a couple of clips. That's our guy. I know That's people, our guy, Sensei. You know a lot about him. Well, so the funny story is <laughs> Nate actually reached out to both Sensei and I about being a part of the influencer boxing scene. I actually gave, I didn't remember I did it. I gave his information to Kingpin, not even remembering oh, that I did it. And yeah, sure enough, I see him on the day they're taking pictures. He goes, hey, you remember? You know, I, yeah. I reached out. They said you gave... I was like, no, I don't. But sure, brother. Hey, nice. You know. So I guess you might be, you might if be he raising wins it. I'm taking all the slaughter. credit. If he loses, I have nothing to do with it. All right. I didn't know anything about it. So wait, you're not you're not yeah. dancing around this question. What? Who wins yeah. this tournament? In your opinion? <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna. Uh, I think I think I do genuinely think Gib. Okay. But my mind could be easily changed. I think after the first. It'll be interesting to see after April 22nd, yeah. we're going to be like, I know who's going to win it. Yeah. Like, we just don't yeah. know. No, you're right. A lot of that, answers. That, that Tom and, and Jarvis fight is going to be a real eye-opener to see, like, because what you could see oh. either of those two go into the – but Winderson, I mean, there's there's somebody. King Kenny we're not talking about. He's throwing hands yeah. now. Everyone's um, everyone's yeah. good enough to win, to beat each other. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Exactly. Like, everyone, everyone has the potential to beat each other because they're good enough, and it's not that far-fetched, so yeah. which is perfect. That's yeah. what you want for attorney, you know? It's very competitive. One hundred percent. Okay, we're gonna end it off right here, L. But we're gonna do something that you did with me on camera, not the stuff that you know we did off. <laughs> the thing that we did on camera, and I thought it was such a brilliant idea that you guys have, uh, you and your team, the this or that stuff, right? Oh yeah. So I'm not nice. gonna be as good at it as you are, but we're gonna go through yeah. it here, and I'm gonna go rapid fire with you, Sensei. Just hang back. Yeah. Let me do my thing here. Okay. 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 All right, L. You yeah. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Big personality or big feet? Big personality. <laughs> boxing. Oh, uh, boxing. Okay. Headshots or body shots? I'm not good enough for the body shots. Yeah, it's probably headshots. All right. Pancakes or waffles? Is that a trick question? Waffles. Nice. Tall guys or short guys? Tall guys. Yes. Lose to Astrid Wet. <laughs> Or lose in the first round of the Kingpin tournament? Mm, good question. Thank Neither are going to happen, though. <laughs> I hate <laughs> questions that you think, but it won't happen, though. But it will not happen. All right. Um, uh, lose to Astrid Wett. Okay, last one. The most important one, Elbrook, Wade, or Sensei? <laughs> Uh, wait, I don't know yeah, you, Sensei. Yeah, Sensei, I'm <laughs> We need to meet each other a couple more times. <laughs> yes. The people knew oh, it. Listen, good. there she good. is, the Dumbledong, a.k.a. the Beast, hits like a Mack truck, and do not give a fuck what you think about her. It's L. Brooke. Thank you so much for coming on, L, and good luck to you in the Kingpin Tournament. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs. Huh. I hit the ground and it goes.